Good morning, Kingston Wesleyan Church, and thank you for joining us on Facebook Live this morning. Would you go ahead and worship with us? And hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God in sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, risen with healing and wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to save. In your mighty name, King of heaven, come. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to save in your mighty name, King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come. Come on! 
Good morning, King's Wesleyan Church family and friends. It is so good to be with you this morning. Great to be able to lift up the name of Jesus together. Thank you to Coach Carter and Caleb for uh, leading us in doing that. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, those of you that don't want to know, you can uh, plug your ears, but spoiler alert, uh, I did have Coach Carter and Caleb come in yesterday uh, to record a couple songs, and I uh, appreciate them coming in to do that. Just trying to take a little bit of extra precaution at this time, um, just for their sake, my sake, and so forth. Uh, but appreciate them coming in and leading us in lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, speaking of taking precautions and all of that, uh, we have been online these last three Sundays. Uh, a couple weeks ago, made the announcement that the board had voted unanimously to, to take three Sundays, three weeks, uh, to go virtual. The uh, board did meet our regular Tuesday, uh, first of the month meeting uh, this last Tuesday, and we revisited uh, where things are at in our community, where things are at uh, in the surrounding community. And the board felt like at this time, the best decision is to add one more Sunday. And so we will plan to be virtual again next Sunday and then revisit it following that uh, for a special, with a special board meeting on that Tuesday night and then look at where, again, where things are at. But just with the uh, load of cases that are in our area, understanding where we're at, understanding where uh, a lot of the local hospitals are at, knowing that they're at capacity and especially many of them, uh, as far as their COVID units are at capacity. And so just looking to try to do what we can do uh, to help um, kind of limit the spread and keep people safe, not just in the church community, but in our surrounding community as well. And so we, uh, I certainly would ask that you continue to pray for the church leadership as we look at trying to navigate this time and make the best decisions for us um, as God directs. And thankful, it just seems like every step of the way from, from March all the way through, God has just helped us to be right, right there each step of the way. I know um, oftentimes the decisions aren't always met with uh, complete agreement by everybody, and I, I get that, uh, but I, I think that God has proven to show the, his wisdom through our local board of administration, and I certainly appreciate their willingness uh, to make these very difficult decisions. Um, as you probably saw in the, the little bumper video, little promo video, we are starting a new series today called Travel Light. And if you saw our van as we get ready for vacation uh, to, to go to Kansas or Oklahoma any year, if, if you looked at our van, you would go, the Wyatts do not travel light. There's three of us. And yet, if you look at our minivan, it is typically full when we leave Kingston to head south to Oklahoma and Kansas. We take things that we need, and we take things that we might need. How, how many of you are like that? When you go on vacation, you take things that you need, and you take things that you might need. And if truth were to be told, there are a lot of things that we take that we think that we might need that we never need. But yet that's what we do. We, we load up and we go. Now, just want to let you know that this series is not really about how we travel for vacation. It's more about what we do and how we carry baggage through life. How we carry worry and stress and regret and some other things that we carry in life. Baggage that we carry through life that God is inviting us to let go of and to travel light. As we've gone through this last year, you probably have been faced with what we're gonna talk about today and come to the realization that there's something that you need to let go of and, and it's maybe almost been forced, like put right in your face, like this is something that you just, you can't do anymore. But the more that it's put in your face that you can't do anymore, you wanna do it even more. Well, what, what is the it that I'm talking about? 
What do we need to let go of today? Control. How many of you today that are joining us online, how many of you have a problem with control? You want control. If you're sitting down watching the TV, you want the control. If, if you're um, riding in a car and some, you're going to listen to the radio, you want control of the radio. You want control of where the thermostat is set in the house and in the car. And you're going to turn up the heat or you're going to turn on the air conditioner or whatever. You want control. How, how many of you would just admit you want control of your own life? And not only do you want control of your own life, but you want to have control of other people's lives. Now, maybe you wouldn't put it that way. You're, you're just looking to help them because after all, they need your help. Like, like your husband and your children, they need your help to get dressed for family pictures, right? I mean, they, they just need your help. I mean, you just look around today as, as uh, you look in your, the, the, your household and if you, you, you share a house with more than one person, no doubt you're looking around going, yep, they need, they need my help. I mean, just look at them. They need they need my help. That's not being like controlling. I'm not a control freak. I'm, I'm just super organized. I just want to help them be better. I think if we really will pull back our need for control, we'll see that there's a need for something else. And God's inviting us to let go of control. But we oftentimes will refuse to let it go. We want control. But what if our need for control is just really a symptom of a greater need? What if we could learn a, a different way to live? What if we could learn to live free from having to have control? And as we do so, be able to embrace the life that God has for us. Be able to embrace something far greater than what we can get with us being in control. We're going to take a look at a very familiar passage of Scripture. I hope you have your Bibles and you can follow along there at home. We're going to take a look, look at Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. Luke writes this, records the, the birth of Christ, leading up to the birth of Christ this way. Again, very familiar passage of Scripture. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, and just a little side note, Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist, and we see in, in Luke that um, John the Baptist's parents were told that they were going to give birth to a son, that they were to name him John, and it, it's a great story that John was going to be the, the forerunner of the Christ. He was going to be the, the one in the wilderness crying out, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He was going to be the one that was going to call people to repentance and to faith, in Jesus Christ. And he was born to, in many ways, kind of a parallel to uh, in the Old Testament where we have Abraham and Sarah and they're up in age and they had been barren all these years. And then God blesses them with a miracle child. Here, God is going to bless Zechariah and Elizabeth with a miracle child. And so we see in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, as we look at these first few verses in our text today, what, what do we see about Mary? Well, we see that she was a virgin. We see that um, she is highly favored. We see that God is with you. The Lord is with you. But there's something else that we need to see about Mary. She was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. What does that tell us about Mary? It tells us that Mary had a plan for her life. She was pledged to be married. Her life was on a certain trajectory. She was going a certain direction. You could say she was in control. She had a plan for her life. And her plan involved marrying Joseph. Now, what happens when Gabriel comes along is he's throwing a wrench in this plan. This is going to be a complete change of the direction that Mary saw for her life. You think about 
the excitement, the anticipation that Mary would have been experiencing as she's pledged to be married. And she's making all these different plans accordingly. She has a plan for her life. And as Gabriel shows up, we see verse 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. I want to just pause there and look at that word troubled. Like, what, what's going on here? Why is God interrupting my life? What, <laughs> what, what, what? The, there's confusion. Some translations say that Mary was greatly disturbed. I think it's quite possible that there are a number of us today that find ourselves confused. God, what's going on? God, I'm, I'm really concerned about my job situation. I'm concerned about my health. I'm concerned about this. I'm, I'm troubled by that. Uh, how many of us today would find ourselves in a similar situation? Life's not going the way that we want it to go. This isn't what we planned. This isn't what we had in mind. And it's troubling. It causes confusion. It, it disturbs us. Of verse 30, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Now, we're going to walk through this passage, and as we do, so I've highlighted, and I just want to let you know ahead of time that I've highlighted every time that Gabriel says will, okay? So you just kind of keep note as we go through here, and if you really want to, you can even count up how many times Gabriel says will. But the other thing that I want you to do is just kind of put this in the back of your mind, not too far back, but remember Gabriel says to Mary, you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Mary says, wait a minute, just hold on, Gabriel. You're talking really fast, and you've got all these plans and things that you're saying are going to happen. But just a minute, let's, let's back up this train a little bit, because I've got a question that goes back to the, like, the, the first will. How will this happen? Because I'm a virgin. You started off saying that I'm going to conceive. Well, here's the thing. I haven't done what has to be done to be able to do that. So how will this happen? And Gabriel continues. He answers. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth Month Before I get to this last statement in verse 37, I, I want us to just go back to what Gabriel says. He says, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child. What, what's another way that we can say is going to have? We could actually just shorten it into one word. It's a word that Gabriel has already used a lot. Even Elizabeth, your relative, will have a child, right? Doesn't that fit? And we see... <laughs> This final conclusion that Gabriel gives to Mary. And he adds up all of the other wills, if you will, in this one statement. Verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. So why go to the, all the trouble of highlighting these wills and pointing them out? Because if we're going to let go of control... We're going to have to understand why we should let go of control and what we need to do in its place. What we can embrace in its place. 
I think that as we look at this text, I think it helps us to see that there are a lot of things that we carry in this life that we were never meant to carry. I think there are a lot of burdens that we bear that God never intended for us to have to carry. I think the more that we try to carry these burdens, the more frustrated we get because we can't control what we can't control. And I think that's why a lot of us have been frustrated this year in particular. Because we're seeing more and more and more things that we can't control. The more that we can't control, the more afraid that we tend to get. And wouldn't you know it, the more afraid that we are, the more we try to control. Have you seen that in your own life? Because of fear, you start to try to control other things other situations. Maybe because there's a fear at work, you try to control more at home. Or maybe because there's a fear at home, you try to control more at work. Or maybe even you try to control more in whatever area you're in where you fear you're losing control. And it's becoming more obvious that you really don't have control. It's also true that the more we try to control, the more frustrated we get because we can't control what we can't control. But oftentimes that leads to just a continual spiral of trying to control even more. And so we get more fear and we get more frustration. And I think if we'll look at this last phrase here, I think we can start to unlock what God has for us and what God is inviting us to do as we let go of control to embrace something else in its place. What does Gabriel say? He says, for no word from God will ever fail. I think what Gabriel is saying to Mary is, you need to let go of control and embrace faith. You need to let go of control. You want to control your life. You want to control what happens. You've got a plan for your life. And God's inviting you to let go of control and embrace faith. You can trust God, is what the angel Gabriel is saying to Mary. His word will never fail. You can trust God. And so Gabriel, very patiently, kindly, he goes back and he's like, all of these wills, it's a reminder that when you submit and you surrender to God's will, God will. God will do this. Mary's like, how's all this going to happen? God will. That's Gabriel's answer. God will. You don't have to. God will. How am I going to conceive God's child? God will. Mary's not responsible for putting uh, God on the throne, Christ on the throne. God will do that. Mary's not responsible for establishing his throne forever. God will do that. Mary's not, as, not responsible for making him the Lord most high. God will do that. God's going to take care of these other things. Mary's got one responsibility. I'm going to give something away. Because as we let go of control and embrace faith, we see that embracing faith right-sizes responsibility. When we let go of control and embrace faith, we choose to trust God. It right-sizes responsibility. If you go back to this conversation between Gabriel and Mary, we see that Gabriel is saying God's going to be responsible for all of these other things, you've got one responsibility. I asked you to, to just kind of plug that in the back of your mind. Just kind of hold on to that. What, what was Mary's responsibility that Gabriel gave to her on behalf of God? You are to call him Jesus. That's it, Mary. That's your responsibility in this. That's, that's what I'm giving you right now. God's going to do all this. God will. If you'll surrender to his will, God will. 
And here's your part. You name him Jesus. Can you do that? That's your responsibility. You don't have to carry the weight of all of this other responsibility of making sure that Jesus becomes who God has for him to become. And Jesus does what God has for him to do and all of that and fulfill all of these prophecies from ages past. That's not your responsibility. God's got that. Mary, you just name him Jesus. You see, embracing faith right sizes responsibility. Mary was at a point, and this is what the angel's inviting her to do. Let go of control and embrace faith. You do what God has for you to do, and then you trust God to do what only God can do. You trust that God's will will be done by him, that he will do things according to his will. And when he does things according to his will, you'll know that he will accomplish his perfect purposes, that he will be faithful to his promises, that his plan will come to fruition. And you just do what he tells you to do. That's your responsibility. In essence, you control what you can control, and you let God control everything else, because ultimately, he's in control. He's in charge. He's God, and so we're going to trust him to be who he is and to do what only he can do. Well, I think we all know Mary's response in this. But let's go ahead and, and take a look. How does Mary respond? She says, I am the Lord's servant. May your, word be, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. What did Mary not do? Mary didn't, after the, all of this with the angel, she, she didn't just say, let me be. Why don't you go interrupt somebody else's life? Go mess with somebody else. Go trouble somebody else. Go change somebody else's plans. I've got my own plans. I want to do things my way. Let me be. She didn't respond that way, did she? Instead of saying, let me be, she simply basically said, let it be. I give up control. And I'm going to embrace faith. I'm going to trust God to do what God wants to do. And I will do what he tells me to do. I am his servant. It's interesting to me that scholars look at what Mary's response here. May your word to me be fulfilled. And they take a look at what Jesus prayed in the garden. Right before his trial and crucifixion, where Jesus prayed those famous words, nevertheless, my, not my will, but yours be done. It was really the same response that Mary had had. I'm going to let go, and I'm going to trust. Your will be done. You do what you need to do. When I trust God's will, I'm trusting that God will. God will fulfill his promises. God will fulfill his perfect purpose in my life and in the lives of others. And so I can be like Mary and let go of control and embrace faith. I wonder today, I wonder today as we just kind of wrap up this first week of Travel Light, where do you need to let go of control and trust God? Where are you holding on to something tightly and you're carrying a burden, a responsibility that is not yours to carry and it's weighing you down? Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your relationship with your spouse. Maybe it's with your children. Maybe it's at work your career. Maybe it's your health. Now hear me, I'm not suggesting that we act irresponsibly. I'm just asking where do we need to right-size our responsibility? Where do you need to right-size 
your responsibility? Where do you need to trust God with something that you've been trying to control on your own? Which of these, or maybe it's something else, needs to be right-sized with your responsibility? And you need to just take what God has for you to do. And God's saying, here's what I have for you to do with your finances. Here's, here's what my word says is the wisdom for handling finances. You do what I have for you to do. You control what you can control. And you trust me to do what I can do. You trust my ways. Here's, here's my word and here's my, my way for raising your children. You do what I have for you to do and then you trust me to do what only I can do. Here's what I have for your relationship with your spouse. You do what you can do, what I'm telling you to do, and then you trust me with the rest. I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing that we all have at least one area where we need to surrender control to the Lord. And we need a right-size responsibility. And so for you, maybe it's just praying a, a prayer, something like this, Lord, I surrender my will to yours. I commit to trust you by doing what you tell me to do. And I will trust you to do what only you can do. Let's let go of control and embrace faith in its place. And as we embrace faith, find that embracing faith right-sizes responsibility. And as we right-size responsibility, we're able to travel light. Love to pray with you, and then Carter, Coach Carter and Caleb are going to lead us in one more song. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we can trust you. You have proven yourself to be faithful. You're so good. So good to us. And Father, we, we just admit, we confess that there is so much that we don't understand. There's a lot that confuses us. There's a lot that troubles us. And Lord, just as I'm praying for others, I'm praying for myself. Lord, help us to lay that at your feet. Instead of trying to control what we can't control, it's not our responsibility to begin with. Lord, help us to trust you, to let go of control and to embrace faith, to, to trust you and in trusting you to do what you tell us to do, but also to trust you to do what you will do so that your will will be accomplished in and through our lives. And that as your will is accomplished, we can rest assured that your name will be honored and glorified. That through us, others can come to know you and your goodness in their life as well. And so work and have your way. May we travel light this Christmas season. And it's in and for your name that I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Let's lift up the name of Jesus together.
Thank you for joining us. God bless you and have a great week.